So here I'm just going to show you a quick experimental uh, setup uh, how we can look at Hooke's Law um, and then I'm going to show you the how to draw a perfect table, how to draw a uh, okay, yeah, produce and draw a graph. So what I have here is a clamp stand with a spring on the end of it. I have um, a weight um, with hook on the end and a really important thing you need to remember when you're doing this practical is that one newton is 100 grams and don't go above five newtons, especially when you're using these springs because um, I have seen them break and pick and hit people in the eye, which is dangerous. So the first thing you need to do is to bend your knees and get on the level with where the spring is and work out what an unextended spring, um, what where an unextended spring comes on your um, ruler. It doesn't really matter which um, scale on the ruler you use because we're going to be looking at the extension so it doesn't matter whether you count up or whether you count down for this what you need to do is to hang the weights onto the spring and then you need to be looking at where the bottom of the spring now lines up with your um, meter rule and this is the recording that you need to make here so I've actually already done all of these results but I'm just going to show you what happens as you add lots of different weights on. So that's a one newton weight. If I just add on a two newton weight, now we are up to three newtons, four newtons, and five newtons. So you can see. This is where the unextended spring was, and this is where the spring has ended up, and this is the measurement you need to take. I'll just take that off because I know that five newtons is the um, uh, extent that that spring can stretch to, and I don't want it to um, ping. So, um, like I said, I've already done this experiment, um, and this is what my results table looks like. Um, so, when you do this experiment, whenever you do any experiment, um, you need to make your results table so you are actually writing down what you measured. So I was measuring the length of the spring, you know, uh, with all these different weights added on it, and then I work out the average. The extension I can leave until the end, but it wasn't actually the extension I was measuring, it was the length of the spring. So, working out our averages. So the first thing you need to do when you work out an average is to have a look at the results and see if any of them look a bit weird. So 51, that's minus 23, and they're all fine. These are all close. These, this one is not close, so I'm going to put a circle through it and put a line through it and label it as an anomaly, and all the rest of them look pretty fine. So when we work on average, what we do is we add our results together and divide by the number of results. Um, there can be some confusion when this happens because of way, the way we use our calculator. So what we need to do is to put all of the numbers into the calculator, 2.9, press equals, and then divide it by 3. No, that's way wrong. Okay, so that, calcul that calculator results came up with 211, and I could tell that was way wrong because it, the average is supposed to be um, full very close to these, and it obviously didn't, so I could tell that was way wrong. It's 52.1 plus 52.3 plus 52.9 equals, and then I divide that by 3, equals, turn it into a decimal, and my answer is 52.4. Now, I know the calculator says 52.43, but I've written all of my answers to one decimal place. And if I just take you back to the um, ruler, um, the reason I've done it to one decimal place is because uh, the ruler has decimal places or millimeters marks on it. You can't really um, look at the ruler and say with confidence whether it is between one millimeter or not. Um, some experiments you could, but not with this sort of experiment. So whenever you do, um, whenever you're working out your averages, always make sure you work it out to the same number of significant figures that your um, results are in. Otherwise, you are going to be changing the resolution of um, your experiments. That is a really, really lovely, important word for um, when we're doing our ices because we need our resolutions to stay the same. Uh, whenever we do um, practicals. 
So I'm just finishing working out all of these averages. You'll notice that every time I do um, put something into the calculator, after each set I'm pressing equals. It's important that you press equals after all of them because otherwise you might um, not be averaging the correct things. equals divided by 3 equals change it into a decimal so 70.63 so now I have these results I'm just going to pop that up there and then I'm going to draw the graph of what happens so uh, this is my graph I have uh, my axes labeled oh dear um, centimeters <coughs> Um, you can see that my descriptions are fairly um, descriptive, so this isn't just weight, it's weight added to the bottom of the spring. Oops, I forgot to do something. So, once we have our um, averages, we need to put them into the table, so that's 58, 60.2, 64, no, that's wrong, my apologies, 52.4, 58.2. 60.2, 64.4, and 70.6. So this was the extension, um, of, uh, that was the length that the um, spring went to, now we need to work out the extension, and we do that by taking the unextended length, which is 51 of all it. So 52.4 minus 51 equals 1.4, Um, 58 minus 51 equals 7. I'm going to keep my resolution so it's going to be 7.0. Uh, 60.2 minus 51 equals 7. Uh, 60.2 minus 51 equals 13.4. And 70.63 minus 51. Nope. 70.63 minus 51 equals 19.6. Again, I'm keeping the same resolution all the way down. So now I have my um, resolutions. Let me get my graph here. So this is um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so I've redrawn my axes um, with a proper set of results here, and I'm going to show you how to plot the graph. So, noughts, we had noughts extension at 1 newton, we had 1.4, and each little square up, each little square up is worth 0.2 centimetres, so I've done it two little squares up. 2 newtons was 7 centimetres, 3 newtons was 9 it's 9.2 centimetres, so I do one little square of up. 4 newtons was 13.24. 5 newtons was 19.246. And then what I should get is a lovely straight line through these. And um, because um, at 0 newtons we had 0 extension, this line has to go through the um, origin. Now, Hooke's law um, states that the force is equal to the spring constant times the extension. The force is in newtons, the spring constant is in newton meters, and the extension is in meters. So what we need to do now is a little bit of maths to find out the spring constant of this particular string, spring. So the good thing is um, we don't need to go and look at every single um, uh, experiment we did individually. We can work out Hooke's law from the gradient of the line. So the bigger triangle you draw for this, the better. So I'm going to go from uh, here to here. Really doesn't matter um, where you draw a triangle just as long as you draw like, a nice big triangle. Okay, so um, I've chosen five newtons. So this here is five down to um, 
and that line I always like my students to draw construction lines on their graph so that it makes it nice and clear that is 0 0.6 so 5 minus 0 0.6 equals 4.4 newtons always put your units on here and then we need to work out how high it is we draw our line across that is 17.2 centimeters minus 2 centimeters so 17.2 minus 2 equals 15.2 centimeters we need this in meters because that is the um, standard unit for Hooke's law so to turn it into meters we just divide it by 100 so 15.2 divided by 100 equals 0.152 meters. Now, um, if you can't remember which way round to um, do your divisions, always look at the unit. So this one's newtons per meter. So that means we put our newtons on top. Our newtons were 4.4 newtons divided by 0.152 meters so the spring constant for this spring is 4.4 divided by 0.152 meters and that equals 28.9 newton meters